So I'm here hanging out with Corey today, and we grabbed a couple boxes of cable out of his uh, truck, and we're gonna do a video on all the equipment you need to have a wiring truck as soon as we organize it just a little. I've been busy. Yeah, he's been busy, what can you say? We're wiring a lot of stuff here. And uh, people ask a lot of questions about this, so this is a quick video to talk about some of the differences in the cable. Now, this is, we're doing a job right now that requires CAT 6A cable. This is CAT 6 cable. What we got here, CAT? This is the CAT 6 shielded. CAT 6 shielded. This is CAT 6, and that is regular CAT 5. Regular CAT 5. So when we start holding the cables up together, you're going to start seeing a difference here. So let me just pull them all together. All right. And i get that out of the loop here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I wasn't it. prepared. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't ready. So what we have here is the cables... Your Cat 6 and Cat 5 look pretty much the same. They're not a big difference between them. Once you get into a shielded cable though, you have this little extra piece of shielding here uh, to cut down RF frequencies, and it's a little bit thicker. Once you go all the way to Cat 6A, this stuff is heavy, and you know, it pulls pretty much the same to the ceiling. It's a heck of a lot more difficult. It's a lot more weight. This is a, these cables, once you get to Cat 6A, only come in these larger spools. Now, Cat 5e, it's been around forever. We still install a lot of it. Some people are kind of surprised by that, but it comes down to budgets. And Cat 5e will do 300 meters full gigabit connection. And that's fast enough for most people. I, I know someone's screaming right now saying, oh no, you should just always go to the best. And I'm like, the reality is... Not everybody can afford it. Not everybody can afford it. Uh, when, and it scales upward. Yeah, it's only a little bit more until you're doing a thousand drops at a time. The other thing is Cat 6, as well, if you're just going straight CAT6, has the same limitation of 300 meter gigabit. So there's not a big difference between the two of them, but CAT6 will do 37 meters at 10 gigabit. So you can get faster speeds out of it, so it does have some potential, but only up to 37 meters. The particular project we're working on is requires CAT6A because they need longer than 37 meters to have 10 gigabit, and it's for a bunch of switching equipment we're putting in. So the Cat 6A is nice, but boy, just <laughs> it's a lot heavier. Everything it's, about it. It's this <laughs> this the weight of this is probably equal to the weight of, of both of these put together. Yeah. The Cat 5 and the Cat 6, just the Cat 6A. When you're running it, you instead of being in a box, you also have to think about distribution. So we have spools that we hold these on and you pull them off of spools as you pull them out of boxes. So there's also the more setup time, the more work. There's a lot more that goes into some of the Cat 6A wiring. A lot more prep work. Yeah. yeah. And then it goes a step further. So I, it takes seconds. Corey can probably do these in his sleep and probably has done them in his sleep when it comes to just punching down these Cat 5s. They snap in real easy. They're pretty much standard. You know, the, the, the easy to do, punch them down. Here's the uh, keystone, here's the patch panel, no very, big deal. Very thin, very, very thin wire, very thin toothing in here on the back of the bag. You can just push them in with the, the little tool, no yeah. problem. It gets a little bit more rigid when we go to Cat 6, but the spacing is just about identical between these. So they, you can't really tell the difference unless they look really close. The wire's okay, a little bit tighter on there. So this is your Cat 6 ones. But once you get to Cat 6A, it's much, much different. Much, much different. The Cat 6A cable is so heavy. And this, particularly, this particular one is a Keystone shielded. We have one of the Keystones out, and I'll show you a close up here of what this Keystone looks like. Now, these are different because these push in and lock down. Not all of them are going to be shielded, so we have an unshielded keystone on one end and a shielded one at the other. Uh, this particular piece of cable is a shielded one. It's different than the cable right here. This is Cat 6A unshielded, but if you're in a high RF environment, like the, if your comm room has got a lot of other electrical interference, these are going in automotive, so we needed the shielded ones on here. And also, your keystones, some of the Cat 6A, you can buy shielded too and they have a huge, huge price difference. These are almost $6 a piece. Yeah, the price jumps up quite a bit once you go to these Cat 6A quite connectors. So it adds a lot to the job as well. So you have to consider that when you're putting this all together and making sure that you have the right ends for the job. And the shielding makes 
another process. So you end up taking a lot longer to push these in, pull the cable apart. Uh, the guys are laughing before we started the video watching me trying to cut through the shielding on this. Because I, I take a, I guess, scissors on a pocket knife just a real quick. You can run around with your finger like this and you can pop the cable right off. This stuff, not so much. It's, it's, it's a lot more to work with. By the time you do about 12 or 13 of these, your fingers are pretty sore. Your fingers are really <laughs> sore on these. It's a lot of Especially work. when you have to pull these out like this yeah. and put them in. You can see just how... And, and that's even heavier shielding is than this. That's, that's even heavier right. than this. And you can see the cable wants to... It's just a lot of memory Curl back it, up. Which causes a lot more... Even with this metal end on it. It, it causes a lot more... Uh, uh, you know, a lot more problems pulling it and trying to keep it straight going up into a ceiling tile to pull it to your destination. And that, that's part of the struggle with the CAT 6A, really. Yeah. So once you get a bundle of these, or as we do, we have a, a group of them on spools and we're trying to pull a lot at once, everything is amplified. So you have to have uh, larger rings and chases when you're pulling it through. It doesn't just pull as easy over things because the cable itself is so rigid, it doesn't pull easy. So this does increase the price a little bit. And this is why the labor prices go up as well as the this cable costs about three times what that cat 5e costs down there uh, so it's not a little bit of a change when you start scaling to these larger jobs it's a whole lot more the nice thing is with these we've settled on for uh, the cat 6a's even if they're not shielded uh, the modular ones become a whole lot easier to work with because once you go to these where they're non-modular where you just punch down and braid the wires in between here you don't want to do that with the CAT 6A because it's so thick. The modular, once you go to these, they're great. The downside of the modular is they are a little bit bigger, so they don't, they're do not they not as space conserving, so you get a little bit of a wider. And, and they're about twice as heavy, too. They're, oh yeah, it weighs a lot more, it's a lot heavier. But the nice thing is when you take these out, you just pop the individual units out, wire them, and pop them back in, making it really easy to do the process. Now, they do also make the non-shielded Cat 6A patch panels as well and you know yeah they're, they're you can just, get them they're, in they're, they're, a, they're a pain in the butt to get to get your wire management to come off of that properly because they just kind of want to float wherever they land and and that's a that's a big deal when you're talking about a cable that doesn't quite ply as good as maybe the cat 5 yeah and once you get to these jobs where you're doing two or three hundred runs and you're doing a series of com rooms it, your fingers are bleeding by the end of each day trying to push yeah. them down. Uh, that's one of the reasons we go, once we get to this larger cable, going modular makes it way easier. I like the non-modular when you're dealing with the small ones, but once you get to these larger jobs, the other nice thing too, because the cables, instead of coming in from each side and being braided through, they're gonna punch straight in there. So each cable, and I'll show you by putting this one back in the hole. Yep. Here. Yeah, you gotta, gotta hold it for you. Yeah, I got it. Okay. And it's, these things are like, notably heavy yeah so we uh we put it in if i get it in there right i got it upside down don't i no. i do yeah you do. i do <laughs> this is why i hire him because i will put things in wrong and get them stuck <laughs> i'm consistent at this here you yeah, i have a professional pull it out for me now you never actually you hire my company and you hire smart people i hire you don't actually hire me to do the wiring I know where all the wires need to go, and that's about it. And then when you're doing a cable management now, now that it's properly put in, you'll see how the wires are going to come straight out. So the back of the CAT6, every one of them is coming straight in like uh, this. Another thing too, Tom, is this modular panel comes with trays that actually slot in here to where you actually have a retainer. Once you yes. finish one row, you put that retainer on and then you zip tie the wire to it and it keeps the wire perfectly straight out away from the back of your CAT6A panel yeah. because it they want to twist on you. There's just nothing you can do about it. Right, that's another problem you do is that cables want to twist up on you. But these are some considerations if you want to get into Cat 6A or you want us to wire Cat 6A for you. Um, these are all the other consideration that goes into it. So the extended labor on the back end has to be calculated into the job versus Cat 5E, like we can do those in our sleep and standard, you know, doing around. If you have to put RJ45 ends on these too, that's they, another they, pain they, in the butt. They're, they're shielded as well, but they take probably about five times as long to do one as it does to yes, do to maybe like two or three of the cat five so ends. You, pre preferably we love to put jacks on the end of these yeah. as well because once in these are these are all those considerations you want to you want to start thinking about how bad do you need cat 6a i mean if you have unlimited budget awesome 
spool this stuff out. Matter of fact, Cat 7's available. Yeah. <laughs> we're not, we don't have any of that today Woo. in stock, so we're not going to cover that. Yeah. Uh, but that's available. I know Cat uh, Cat A is, I believe, on the horizon. I see yeah. the spec for it. Yeah, I don't they, know when it's coming out. Just started talking about it. Yeah. So I don't know when we're getting there. Uh, but in terms of Cat 6A, it is available. You can get the full. Uh, you know, 10 gigabit connections over this. So if that's if you have that type of use case, like the particular job we're doing uh, to install all these, which is um, in the car dealership networks, th it's great. They have the budget for it. If you don't have the budget for it, just stepping down, still even all the way to Cat 5, gigabit connection still really relevant and probably will be for a long time. A lot of people are fine with that level of speed because um, the 10 gigabit connectors on your computer are still a little bit pricey. Yeah, the price hasn't come down that much. It's working here. And I know someone's screaming, There's, but Tom, you can buy the Asus one for less than 100. I know, but they're still not standard equipment on most PCs bought here in 2018. But don't worry, we'll do a new video as soon as that does become standard. I'm like, remember back when we thought Gigabit was fast enough? All right, thanks. That's it. This wanted to cover these real quick because a lot of people seem to have questions about all the wiring and we're still working on doing some more on-site wiring jobs that comes down to a lot of permission but we will when we uh, aren't busy we'll do the video on everything you have to have the equipment we have just to get all the wiring done like all the tools uh, that we use and everything else so keep watching like subscribe and all that fun stuff and hire us for wiring jobs if you want uh, we're in Detroit Absolutely. and the greater Detroit tri-county area we'll even <laughs> go down as far as Toledo and we'll even go all the way to Toledo Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Leave us some feedback below to let us know any details, what you like and didn't like as well, because we love hearing the feedback. Or if you just want to say thanks, leave a comment. If you want to be notified of new videos as they come out, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell icon. That lets YouTube know that you're interested in notifications. Hopefully they send them, <laughs> as we've learned with YouTube. Anyways, if you want to contract us for consulting services, you go ahead and hit lawrencesystems.com and you can reach out to us for all the projects that we can do and help you. We work with a lot of uh, small businesses, IT companies, even some large companies, and you can farm different work out to us or just hire us as a consultant to help design your network. Also, if you want to help the channel in other ways, we have a Patreon. We have affiliate links. You'll find them in the description. You'll also find recommendations to other affiliate links and things you can sign up for on lawrencesystems.com. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.